So the best way to explain uh, how Alpaca works is essentially to run through the pipeline with, using an example. So here I'm just giving you, um, I'm illustrating two meshes. They are both femur meshes, uh, both from gorilla specimens. So the blue one corresponds to a, a male gorilla and the red one corresponds to a female gorilla. And as you can see, there's a big difference in size between them. The, the, the male gorilla femur is much larger than the female. And let's say that we're using the female uh, femur as a template uh, from which we, we want to transfer the landmark positions that we've collected in this female um, uh, mesh to the male one. So Alpaca, what is going to try to do is align these two structures and deform the female mesh so that it matches per as perfectly as possible the, the, the male one, and then eventually transfer the landmarks so that in the end we end up with uh, collecting the same landmarks that we collected in the female mesh uh, in the male mesh. So let me just clear the scene so we can walk through the alpaca pipeline. Um, so essentially you have to provide alpaca with the source mesh, the source landmarks and the target one. So the source one is, in this case is the female template and the target one is the male one. Uh, and it has a very simple, straightforward and linear pipeline. The first thing that we wanna do then, as I mentioned, um, in the slides is that we want to subsample those meshes so that we're working with a much sparser representation of the morphology. So we can click on that and essentially what we get is uh, the target mesh here, the, the male gorilla um, femur, but a, a, a much sparser uh, representation of it, essentially a point cloud. Um, and the next step, once you've sem subsampled your meshes, so in this case the source point cloud was subsampled to a mesh size of uh, 982 points, uh, while the, the, the target one, 1071. Uh, then we want to align those things rigidly. So basically find the optimal scaling, rotation, and translation that will allow us to align these things uh, without deforming them. So we click on that. And as you can see, uh, it runs really fast and essentially tries to uh, perfectly align or in a rigid manner, those two point clouds. So you can see the female in red um, and the male in blue. So as you can see, and also scale the female so that it's much larger than it should be. And we can actually display those meshes so that you can better see uh, how these things um, are matching each other. And you can see it's a pretty good match. The main difference seems to be the angle here in the femoral head uh, that is quite different between the two. Uh, and then essentially the next step of the alpaca pipeline is going to be the deformation. So, and that's pretty much one of the last steps, which is to try to deform this uh, female mesh to match as perfectly as possible the, the male one. Uh, and that actually is the step of the alpaca pipeline that takes the longest. So right now I'm running with a very, very simple example. I'm, I didn't collect that many points. Usually the recommendation is that to collect between any t anywhere between 4,000 and 6,000 points uh, so that you can get a good uh, alignment between these things without too many false positives or false negatives. Uh, but right now I'm running, as you can see, like a much much sparser representation and collecting just a thousand points on those uh, original point clouds. And hopefully what we get at the end after the deformation is that after the female uh, mesh gets the form to match the male one, Hopefully what we're gonna get is a good transfer of landmarks so that it covers uh, the, the May one as perfectly as possible. As you can see, the pipeline has finished uh, and you can, you can opt to also show the deformed uh, source model in green. And you can see basically the, the, the green model represents the, the, the red model after the deformation. And you can hide, of, of course you can hide all of that and just keep your target mesh, and you can see the, the, the male mesh, uh, you, you were able to sample all those landmarks quite effectively. And you didn't have to spend a lot of manual time actually placing those landmarks, it, it did it completely automatically. And essentially that's how Alpaca works. It tries to provide a very straightforward and useful tool to transfer landmarks uh, from one specimen to another so that you don't have to manually landmark those uh, specimens.